All right. Thank you for that kind invitation, Helen. Or in, uh, introduction and the invitation. Um, I'm not a uh, historian of science, although I've long been interested in the history of science. Uh, I came to this presentation almost serendipitously, um, and it came from two directions. Uh, first of all, from this uh, remarkable new exhibit that's just been installed up at the Grand Canyon on the south, there, right along the Rim Trail. How many people in the audience have been to the Trail of Time? Great, great, at least half of you. Um, the other half of you, you, you need to get there as soon as possible. Um, preferably after the snow melts so that you can actually see a lot of it. It's a remarkable exhibit. That's a photograph from uh, one of the entrances to it. It's 2.8 miles long, and it's uh, basically a geological timeline. It was designed by uh, Carl Karlstrom at the University of New Mexico, Albuquerque, and some uh, co-PIs, including one of my colleagues at ASU named Steve Semkin, who's in geoscience education. And they decided, you know, it's really hard to understand deep time. It's one of the most difficult and abstract concepts uh, for people to imagine uh, the kinds of lengths of time that are necessary uh, for understanding the formation of the Earth and formation of the Grand Canyon in particular. How do you make it real? You know, in our, our human lives, we can imagine 100 or 200 years fairly easily, but 1,000 years? I, I can't, if I'm a historian, I can't get my head around a thousand years. Well, how about a million years? How about a billion years? It's just really difficult. And they sort of scratched their head and said, there's got to be a way for us to create an educational tool that somehow brings these massive ages of deep time in some tangible way, brings them home to individuals and uh, children in particular. And they created this concept of the Trail of Time. And every meter that you walk, every three feet, there's a little circular plaque embedded in that pavement in the sidewalk that uh, marks, I think, what is it, a million years? Yeah, a million years every meter. There's a couple of places where they condense time. Of course, there's a great unconformity. And near the end of the trail, they shrink it so that it's not a million years every meter. It's, I don't know, a thousand years, and then it's 10 years, and then Suddenly, it's every year. So they're trying to make this uh, uh, graspable, in a sense. And it's a, it's a really brilliant exhibit. Um, and there's a lot of beautiful plaques. One of the things that I like about it is um, they went and they collected rocks um, from the canyon, mostly from along uh, the bottom of the canyon on, on river trips that, that they took numerous times per year. They would collect a rock from a geological layer that they were interpreting up on the Trail of Time. They'd take it to a special place where it would be cut and polished and then mounted on these beautiful little pedestals. And they tell you, here's the kind of rock it is and here's how old it is. Uh, I would love to have been involved in that project from the beginning and gone on all those wonderful river trips where they're collecting these uh, gigantic rocks. Uh, I ran into them in April down on the river. I took my first uh, river trip on the Colorado River last April for the first time. Finally got baptized. <laughs> and uh, it was remarkable, of course. Uh, but along the way, I was with the Park Service uh, group uh, and Grand Canyon Association. It was a GTS um, River Guide Training Seminar. And uh, wonderful people on that trip. But we ran into Carl Carlstrom and his crew in their, in their boats, and they were you know, going along the riverside looking for just the right rocks and hauling these, you know, 300 pound rocks into their rafts. I thought, what a, what a job. Love to have that job. It was a motor rig or motor rig? It was a motor rig. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even need to ask that question. <laughs> the other thing that brought me to this topic of uh, geology and the history of science in the canyon was this project that uh, Helen um, mentioned. Um, besides the traveling trunks for school teachers, and if any of you are teachers in the public school system or, or private school, or if you know somebody who's a, a public school teacher, these traveling trunks are a really cool concept. It's a box full of curriculum materials and hands-on stuff, um, books and maps and videos and, um, and uh, learning projects, and a whole booklet full of curriculum design, lesson plans for the classroom, for teaching about Basically, what we did is we created a primary trunk and a secondary trunk, and all of the curriculum materials are tied to state and national history and social studies standards, which teachers have to teach to. 
and you got a whole box full of materials to help you teach about American history and social studies through the lens of the Grand Canyon. Um, that was one aspect of this project. Another aspect of the project was the walking tour brochure, which Helen showed you. Another one is a digital audio tour of the historic buildings in the Grand Canyon Village, the historic district in the Grand Canyon Village. We have a 144 minute digital audio tour produced by a professional company up in Portland, Oregon. They did a great job, and you'll get to hear a couple of uh, samples from that audio tour. And we created this uh, really rich, extensive uh, website. That's one of the pages on our website called Nature, Culture, and History of the Grand Canyon. You can Google it. Um, if you Google that phrase up there and ASU, it'll come up on your first page. Uh, this, uh, this website includes um, narratives with a lot of visual imagery about all of the historic sites at the South Rim, plus the historic sites at the North Rim, historic sites within the Grand Canyon, Basically about 80 different historic sites at the Grand Canyon we have separate narratives for under a section called Sites and Stories, which you can see up there. Menu drops down and you can select the South Rim, the North Rim, um, Rim to River and Inner, Inner Canyon Trails, etc. Under Canyon History we have a whole series of longer narratives on themes and topics in Grand Canyon history. We have a narrative on uh, Grand Canyon literature, the role of the Grand Canyon in the development of American literature. We have uh, uh, a whole series of narratives on Grand Canyon science, and geology is one of them. So this is one of the Grand Canyon science narratives, and it's a short, accessible uh, narrative on the history of geology at the Grand Canyon. We also have a nice narrative on Yavapai Observation Station, which you'll see and learn about in, in just a minute. So um, through this project, I was introduced uh, to a little bit more about the development, the history, uh, geological Science and Interpretation at Grand Canyon. I'm going to uh, play for you now a sample from our audio tour. It is now available free as a free download online and if anybody's headed up to the canyon, uh, take advantage of it. Looking around at this arid, rocky environment, it's hard to imagine a time when the world's oceans cover the land. But as NBS Ranger David Smith points out, Park visitors get the opportunity to witness a unique geologic event up close as a result of those rising and falling seas. As you're hiking along the rim trail, you're going to notice a rock formation that's along the entire trail. And this is the Kaibab Formation, and this is evidence of an ancient inland sea that was here. This is the cap rock here at Grand Canyon National Park. So as you're walking along, make sure you're looking closely at the limestone. Occasionally you're going to see a fossil. You're going to see brachiopods, which look like ancient clams. Occasionally you'll see some coral as well. Those are all embedded in this formation. The formation is limestone, so it's made up of the fossilized, decayed remains of all these shellfish that lived here 270 million years ago. I'm sorry, I, I edited those and I clipped off the end of some of those, but you get the sense of what that is. Any, any you know anybody who is uh, savvy with iPods or MP3 players, and you're taking them up to the canyon, especially kids who are easily distracted, uh, download this audio tour, and when you're walking along the river and you come to her camps or the Hopi House or to El Tovar or the Bright Angel Lodge, every single one of those uh, has an interpretation um, done by this company. All right, well, what I want to talk about today is a cultural trail of time uh, and um, sort of explore um, the last, so say, 150 years of our groping towards an understanding of the age of the earth. This question has been around for, since the very first person ever saw the Grand Canyon um, and, and wondered how it could have been formed. How long did it take for that thing uh, to be formed? There were some folks who thought that it, it must have happened in a cataclysmic event. Um, others, especially in the mid to late 19th century, began arguing that it formed over uh, extremely long periods of time. Um, how old are its rock layers? The canyon itself is fairly young compared to the ages of the rocks. And then, of course, the ultimate question, how old is the Earth? How long has this place been here? These answers to these questions, I'm arguing, are as much cultural as they are factual. At least the, the struggle, the search for knowledge and understanding is a human search. And it has a history. Uh, science, I'm arguing, is in essence a cultural institution. It's embedded in time and place. 
and